Uh, if we think of orbits, we might think of the Earth orbiting the Sun or an electron orbiting a nucleus in the atom. Uh, the Earth orbit involves two massive bodies, the Earth and the Sun, uh, and it's called a gravitational orbit. The atomic orbital involves, uh, at its simplest level, which is a hydrogen atom, uh, just two particles, an electron orbiting a photon. Although these orbits look to be similar, uh, a small body orbiting a large body, uh, we are told they are not. Uh, in the simulation hypothesis model discussed here, the entire universe is a simulation, down to the smallest detail. Uh, there are links below. And everything happens at the Planck scale where the simulation operating system is found. The Planck scale is to the atom as the atom is to the universe, so it is a very small scale. Furthermore, this uh, simulation is divided into discrete units of time, Planck time, uh, which is the clock rate of the simulation, and so the smallest possible unit of time. Uh, this is how our computers work. It makes programming a lot easier. Um, the analogy would be a casino. At each unit of time, I throw the dice and win or lose. Uh, the clock ticks over, and I throw the dice again and again, win or lose. Each throw is a discrete event, followed by the next throw. One, two, three. Uh, the casino manager, however, only looks at the results of many throws. At the end of the day, he wants to know the probability of the casino winning. Uh, the casino manager is looking at many events summed over time. The gambler is only interested in events at unit time, and did he win or lose? There is a phenomenon in physics called wave-particle duality, that sometimes an electron seems to be a wave and sometimes a point. What we do here is replace that duality by a wave-to-point oscillation. Uh, this simplifies our calculations immensely. The electron goes through a wave state, then it collapses into a single point. Uh, we will define this point as the mass state. The electron is now a unit of mass, which is equivalent to Planck mass. However, this point only occurs for one unit of this Planck time, which, uh, as noted, is the smallest possible unit of time. Uh, the electron then returns to the wave state, which is the electric state, uh, for the duration of the electron frequency. Now, this means that our electron does not exist at any one unit of time, but rather the electron is an event that is spread over time. The time it takes for one wave to point oscillation is not just the electron period, it is the electron. Importantly, as we see later, most of the time the electron is in the electron wave state where it has no mass. And so if a particle doesn't exist at any one unit of time, this Planck time, and as the, unit, the Earth is made up of particles, the Earth, as we know it, also does not exist at any one unit of Planck time, but rather the Earth, like the casino example, is the averaging over time of all the events that are occurring at unit Planck time. Our physical Earth is, like the electron, an event that occurs over time. It is a planet per second. Uh, if we could stop time, we would not see a solid planet. Instead, we would see uh, a somewhat slightly dark region of space, a little wavy with a few points scattered around. Uh, if we press play and then pause, we will see the same effect. Just the waves and the points will now be in different places as different particles will be in the wave and point states. If we run our program for long enough, a solid Earth planet will seem to appear. Why we see this solid planet is because we too are events that occur over time. I am a human body second. I too do not exist at any one unit of time. Where am I going with all of this? At the Planck scale, there is no Earth or Sun, massive or otherwise. There's only these two regions of space where there are clumps of particles oscillating between waves and points. The simulation works at Planck time. So what it does 
is it takes all the particle points for that one unit of time and then rotates them around each other, like this rotator, giving us a universe-wide network of rotating particle-to-particle -particle orbital pairs. I take one particle in the Earth and form an orbital pair with every particle in the Sun and rotate all these orbitals one step. I then repeat this with every particle in the Earth. Uh, here we have an example of four points. Uh, uh, and as you see, they all need six orbitals. To, uh, six orbital pairs. Uh, this means that, like the atom, instead of the Earth orbiting the Sun, we have those particles that make up the Earth rotating around those particles that make up the Sun. Uh, we now have a network of orbitals that form between particle point states. Conversely, in the atom, the orbitals form wave states. Uh, orbitals form between wave states, sorry. Otherwise, there is no major distinction. Um, sun and Earth are simply names we give to those regions of space where these particle-to-particle -particle interactions are occurring. However, if we map all these rotations over time, then we will see what appears to us to be a solid Earth orbiting a solid Sun. At the Planck scale, where the universe itself operates, we don't have an Earth or a Sun. We don't have a gravitational orbit. We don't have a gravitational constant g. We don't have an orbital Bari center. And we're not distorting space-time. What we do have is this universe-wide network of particles orbiting each other, uh, whether over long distances or within an atom. A gravitational orbital is simply two particles which are simultaneously in the point state which is the mass state, rotating around each other. Why gravity seems weak, it's not as actually stronger than the electric force, if I can use these terms, is because the point state seldom occurs. Most of the time, particles are in the wave state. Uh, the math is all explained on this website, so I won't go into it. Um, particle math, particle, uh, Planck scale math is... Uh, Tedious, but fortunately not difficult. Uh, it can be solved with a simple calculator. Uh, here is another example. Uh, with 26 points and 325 orbital pairs. Uh, we set 17 points in close proximity and then spaced apart 7 points also in close proximity and 2 other points scattered. The red and blue appear to be solid, but that's just because we can't see the individual points orbiting each other. All we have done is set the initial coordinates for each point on our 2D map and pressed start. All 26 points then start orbiting each other. No other information is required. The only physical constant used is the fine structure constant alpha. Uh, we just set the start positions to get the patterns we want. Uh, here is another example. In this example, we start with 32 points. Uh, they begin as scattered points but over time they clump together into three planets, uh, we can say. However, they are still all orbiting each other. Uh, in the above examples, all the points rotated in the same direction. Now, if we have some rotate in one direction and some in the opposite direction, then we will get an elliptical orbit. If all the orbitals are rotating in random directions, we will get a straight line. In other words, 
If all the orbitals of a satellite are aligned, the satellite will follow a circular orbit around the Earth. If they're all unaligned, the satellite will follow a straight line orbit. We call this orbit falling. Gravitational potential and kinetic energies are simply a measure of, of alignment of the orbitals. Uh, the atomic orbital has an additional alpha term, otherwise the formulas are the same as for gravitational orbitals. There is a simple uh, atomic model called the Bohr model, which treats the electron orbit as similar to a gravity orbit, and this is still taught today, although considered incorrect. In this model, the electron orbits the center at a distance called the Bohr radius. If we want the electron to move further from the nucleus, or even leave the atom completely, we hit it with a photon of light. This process is called electron transition. In this model, the orbital is the Bohr radius, and this orbital radius, this Bohr radius, is itself a photon, but of inverse phase. The Incoming photon doesn't hit the electron, instead it attaches onto this orbital radius uh, because they're both photons and makes it longer. The electron then ends up further from the center, although the electron itself took no active part in this transition. This transition is what we're watching on this simulation. In the hydrogen model, molecule, we have two hydrogen atoms orbiting each other. That's two electrons and two protons. Uh, we know the optimum distance between them where the orbits will be the most stable. Uh, curiously, if we simulate this as a simple orbit, uh, we get the following pattern. If we change the optimal distance, uh, then this pattern starts to break down. Uh, I've put the links on the website below.